Hey, I'm Tommy Chong. Welcome to High on Homegrown. That's a big one. That's what you get. That's what you get for four fucking grams. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, that's your hard. Well, anyway, yeah. So while GB is out there in the forest in his back garden, hunting pheasants on a Saturday, as you do, (laughs) he might be looking for certain places to plant cannabis outdoors in the woods. And this is essentially what gorilla growing is. It's where you're taking some seeds or some plants and planting them away from your property so it's not on your property, finding somewhere out there in the wilderness where plants can grow, and plant them there and hope for the best. This is Guru Growing. And that's what we're going to be talking about this, this week. So uh, I've tried this a few times. I mean, la- last year I tried it. I planted some out there. You all might remember I put them up on the forum, and they didn't really last long and shit. There's like two that made it to the end, and they were just tiny little plants. But if a good spot is found and it's done properly, then you might end up like SMG here, who's in the chat. And he got some fucking some epic harvest last year from the spot he found. So finding a good spot and having a good strain is going to be most of the battle here when you want to try and grow good plants and get loads of weed outdoors. So that's what we're going to talk about, that kind of shit. Finding a nice spot, how to prepare that spot properly, uh, what strains to grow. Just to because some people they can't grow their weed indoors, it's just something that's not possible. So, this is this might be your only chance to get out there and grow some of your own cannabis. So, if you if you are in that position where you can't grow, then it's time to start looking for a spot and planting some stuff outdoors. So, is has anybody done this successfully before? No. Well, you know, I've done it and I've, yeah. I've harvested tiny, <laughs> tiny, tiny, tiny little plants, but mm. so does that I, count? I wouldn't say, say yeah. yeah. I've but done I've it, never... but it hasn't been great success. Yeah. Well, the same with you, Marge, was that? I've tried yeah. it a couple of times over the years, but yeah, it never worked out. Mm. I mean, but I'll, I'll say back, my, my attempt was like so many years ago. I, I knew mm-hmm. absolutely nothing. Shoot, it was a shot in the dark. Same. And yeah. I used totally the wrong strains at the time. This was before it was, I used them. Um, Strains that should really be in a tropical climate, and <laughs> Ireland is definitely not a fucking tropical climate. <laughs> no, it, I mean, the further north you get, obviously, the colder it's going to be for longer. But if you have like a greenhouse or something or something to cover the plants, you can mo- grow most strains outside. It's just like that, some will suffer more than others, and it. I find if you buy some of them ones from Dutch Passion and seed banks like that, Barney's Farm, you know, these Dutch guys, they, they seem to have strains that have been bred to be more used to these environments that we have in the UK and Ireland. The same sort of latitude, isn't it? or longitude, whichever one it is. And it is the same, yeah. too. If you, if you know, we don't have the big names like that, but there's like, for example, there's a, there's a cut called Friesland that if you're in the east, in Quebec specifically, you probably have heard of Friesland, and that's... Uh, you know, bread for the Canadian mm. short growing season. Time warp is another one that's grown out on Vancouver Island. Very, very, Mar- very classic. Yeah. There's one called but, Purple Maric over here in the UK, which is just famous for being grown outdoors every right, year. Right. Was yeah. there was one here? I can't remember if it was Atlantic Haze or Blue Atlantic or some shit like that. The Frisian duck and the Frisian Jew as well. They're uh, they're good for growing outdoors, aren't they? They're from Dutch mm. Passion. And they're, they're pretty hardy for the outdoors as well. And for in Ireland, um, Blue Dream. Blue Dream is a good one for growing. Um, Big Bud is a good one for mm. growing in Ireland. I presume it'd be, it'd be good. Or the UK has a pretty good climate or a similar climate to, the, to Ireland. Actually, it's a better climate. Yeah. To be fair. We're a bit yeah. closer to the Gulf Stream, right? <laughs> yeah, you said, well, well, I think, I, I don't know if it's closer. We, we might be closer to that. It's just, mm. I think we shield G. So we take the brunt of it. Yeah, the, yeah. The, maybe if you're able to grow photos, but no. do grow. Autos are another option, you know. I, here in Saskatchewan, if I grow outside, I don't do gorilla growing anymore. I never really did. My gorilla growing is more just like put some plants out in public and haha, you know, there they are, mm-hmm. see them, kind of thing. I never intended to to harvest. I've never really needed to having the community that we have here yeah. in Canada. So for so long, but. Um, 
yeah, autos, I have to grow autos outside because if I, unless I do light deprivation with photos, I can't get them to finish in, in time for the cold and the snow and the sun. Like uh, we get our, our sun dies off pretty fast, which is not only makes it colder, but plants need a lot of light during flowering, right? And the sun is really diminishing as every day goes by past uh, September 21st, you know, the, the uh, autumnal equinox, as it were. Mm-hmm. So, um, yeah, we, uh, I always run autos just because mm-hmm. they're fast, they're autos and they're, they're easier, they're easier to leave alone and, and not have to light depri- deprive because you can't really do that out in the bush. Yeah. yeah. So, so, well, that- so first off, when would you, when would you plant outdoors? You say if, you, if you're growing from a seed, if you, if you only, uh, if your only way of doing this is growing from seed, you know, cause it is preferred that you start the plants indoors for a while and get them with a little bit of a root base, a few leaves on it before you plant it outside, because it'll be more likely to survive if you did that. But some people don't have that option. Some people have to just go and plant it outside as a seed and hope for the best. So uh, when in Canada, do you plant outdoors, Marge? Usually here, it's not until after the May long, the May 2-4 weekend, which is the long weekend around the third week of May. So that's still a while and, away. Yeah, wow. but that's when you have... Uh, no risk of frost anymore usually because mm-hmm. sometimes you can have frost up until then and obviously if you plant something too early and you get frost then it will kill it so yeah. typically you would wait until after that weekend and it's pretty safe plant. we we will be the same over here we'd be talking may the first the, the first mm-hmm. two weeks in may anyway will be when you'd be starting to think yeah i think the last frost has passed in the uk now but you, you never know what's going to happen though do you that's, that's, Jeez, that's it didn't problem. frost at the frost that was out there last night man fuck mm. now yeah we were it getting a little, little snow today like yeah. just a, a sprinkling it didn't really last but yeah it yeah. was pretty cold there's reports of snow. snow coming back to the uk uh, next yeah, week next well, week so. yeah. yeah you just never know when it's going to be over so may seems yeah. like a good time doesn't it yeah. yeah yeah it's it's if if you are going to grow photos if you want a, a big one it is handy to to get a start of maybe give it about two three weeks before you're going to plant it mm. and then yeah. bang it out sorry i just stepped away for a sec but i would say after the frost date i don't know if you guys mentioned that but whatever your last frost date is wherever you are if you have mm. that here it's like end of may in yeah, saskatchewan yeah. Mm. sure but just say the last frost date in the uk is oh, yeah. to end of may the children Perfect. knows children knows but it's good to try and start the plants off indoors if you can give them a couple of weeks inside get, get the uh, roots built up get them some leaves and then go and plant them somewhere outdoors but if you can't do that then planting them at the end of may where it starts to get a bit warmer and that's going to be your best option yeah so where are you going to plant these fucking things man what's the plan you go out dirt you go walking the dog <laughs> and you're looking for you're looking for a particular spot to plant these things what we're looking Thanks. for when we look there the is spot. so many be- you want to find somewhere that is a little bit off the beaten track but not too off the beaten track that'll draw attention that if you are going out to have a look at mm-hmm. it you know so like you go in there I, I i have grown like our friend in the chat a small little spot on a motorway did again didn't really do very well and it was a long time mm-hmm. i have a much better place to do it this year but um, you have to find somewhere that uh, it is going to be safe. There's a good trick. Um, I think you've done this, Mackie, didn't you, where you stick a uh, leave five, five pound or five euro? Yeah, that's what I would do, but I don't. Yeah. Oh, not, uh, you know, that's I, a good little trick because <laughs> that would show trick, somebody yeah. is going to be in there, you know, or mm-hmm. in and around. So, like, do that about two, three weeks maybe beforehand it's or just... leave something in there, you know, leave something that's a, a little bit of value. Mm-hmm. You know, and see if somebody fucking strokes it. Well, you know, leave a bit of weed there. You know, it'll be mm-hmm. a little bit smelly, so people might smell it as well and be like, "Where's that?" Yeah, and even come back and it's a little jar, dog man. Is you know, eat it, man. You can. The mm-hmm. dogs even, eat it. it. Haven't you read that story? It's <laughs> true. <laughs> talked about. Yeah, we can't do that. Even, even like if you don't like it, fucking like you said, put a small little jar with a fucking a thing in it, and put, like a small little sign that would be easy enough to see for maybe fucking. Well, I'm not easy enough to see, but you know what I mean. Like, put yeah. a small little sign that somebody would see if they came up along it. Mm-hmm. So, so you want to put a sign they didn't just free weed it. right there. Just put a sign like, <laughs> like the cartoons used to do. Right. 
I think that was a plot on South Park. <laughs> but then you'd want to make sure it has somewhere that has good light. So like South Face and his ID. Mm-hmm. You know? Yeah. But it's some yeah. you don't want to sorry, TJ, you want to do your thing. I was just just super generally going to say somewhere where it's private enough where, you know, and however you mm-hmm. discern that, I don't know, you could leave money out and see if somebody takes it, but then maybe somebody <laughs> finds that they're going to, I guess it's not a good spot anyway, but like, I don't know, find somewhere private, but also somewhere where if somebody sees you going in, they're not going to be like, what the fuck is that guy going in there for sort of <laughs> shit? He's Obviously buried take, in a dead body. <laughs> well, you know, take precautions to not let anybody, you know, see mm-hmm. you when, when you do do your shit, but you know, they're, there's uh it depends where you live. If you're like super urban, like right in the middle of fucking LA or something, probably a bit harder to gorilla grow, you know, unless you're out but in the, f- the wilderness type this shit. Is where I say on the side of the motorways and stuff, man. You see, there is mm-hmm. so many places, even if you're in a city in a thing, like you have these big, huge fucking like roundabouts and like fucking spaghetti junctions. There's places in there that's like in plain sight, but out of sight. Yeah, nobody ever goes there. This is what uh, SMG was just saying in the chat. He said Mm. motorways is a good place. It's one of the best places, man, because there's so much traffic going by. And then if you're wearing like a fucking high vis or a thing, it looks like you're fucking motorway maintenance. Mm -hmm. You know, stick on a fucking hard hat and some high vis fucking pants and thing, and people look. It looks like you'd be long there, you know? That's exactly what I do when I go around town planting Mm -hmm. my seedlings in the city's pots and in the boulevards (laughs) and everything. Mm -hmm. Bust out a fucking orange vest with a hard hat and, like, just wave at everybody that fucking looks at you and go about (laughs) your business like you know what you're doing and uh, move on. (laughs) That's all. It's easy. Nobody fucking ever questions. And uh, if they do, I don't know, just do like Ricky on Trailer Park Boys and just name off some names and be like, oh, yeah, Tim just sent me down here. I'm, I'm just, uh, just going to do this quick. Ricky and, uh, Leahy. Yeah, Ricky yeah. Leahy. Yeah, exactly. So anyway. <laughs> yeah, so uh, SMG saying and GB said there that motorways is a good place, but of course it's very dangerous around the motorways, so you have to be careful. Don't be, don't be actually going on the motorway. Stay off yeah. it and plant nearby it. I'm just saying it's it's interesting because GB, you live in Ireland where mm-hmm. literally you can't go a fucking meter without seeing someone, right? Here in Saskatchewan, you can go for like miles without seeing a, a person, mm-hmm. maybe even not a deer. So like, it's a lot easier to gorilla grow out here. Mm-hmm. So yeah, I, I do apologize. For that. I'm more just like fucking just go put it out there because yeah. like it's easy, <laughs> way easier here. If yeah, you have I mean, I've, I've been looking everywhere around me, and there's nowhere really uncomfortable. Like, I'll, I'll plant shit, like, but I never expect to see it again. It'll be gone yeah. once I planted it. It's not like I'll, I could do a proper gorilla grow, have a nice little spot to return to and tend to the plant sometimes. Nothing like that. That's just not possible. Where I am. It's it's a gorilla grower's paradise where I am. Like, mm. yeah. you know, it's just there is fucking. You just don't want to travel too far, do you? Yeah, you, know, you, don't, you know, you don't want to travel too far to go and see it because you want to be close enough. It's because when you mm. chop this shit down, you don't want to be traveling 20 fucking miles <laughs> with a load of stinky ass plants in your car. It takes, it takes a lot of consideration, man. Yeah, after, after being track, but not too far that you look dodgy and it, not too far that you have to travel for half a day to get there because you've got to think about coming back after the harvest. Mm. So take that into consideration too. But we, I know a couple of people that go up into the fucking into the mountains mm-hmm. and, and deal them up there. Like, is it yeah, just don't forget where you put it in them cases, isn't yeah. it? <laughs> you know, but there is plenty of places up in this place. Like, no matter where you live in the world, there is going to be somewhere. It yeah. just and you know, Google Maps is your best friend for this, mm-hmm. you know, because you can you can have a look in your locale with say within a 15, 20, 30 minute drive of, of your house and have a look and go, right, is there anywhere that I could do? Make yourself a short list of maybe fucking five or six places and go, right, I'm going to go and check each of these places and whittle your way down. Well, what about you, Monkey? What, I mean, this was, you've got, uh, it's big where you are, isn't it? So there's probably loads of places where you can grow. It's possible around here. <clears throat> This far south, uh, we deal with a lot of heat, a lot of rain. Mm. And of course, you know, when a gorilla grow, that's going to also bring bug pressures and other things along with it. So I've never tried a full on gorilla grow down here but to go full term. Uh, I imagine it would be some some interesting preparation you would need to actually get past it, though. Growing season here would be extremely long, though, because, I mean, mm. we generally have our last frost 
sometime mid-March. So from there all the way through past, past Halloween into I mean, almost December sometimes. Yeah, you could grow some nice like hazes and shit. Mm-hmm. Yeah, just you'd mm-hmm. have to find something that's going to be mold resistant, things like that, you know. Mm-hmm. So when you found a spot then, say that you do have a place in mind or you've got an idea of where you're going to plant this shit and you've got your seeds, uh, it's good to prepare the ground first if the, if the ground shit, right? You know, if it's just like a piece of it, like next to a motorway or something where it's just a... Uh, uh, I don't know, it depends, it depends on the ground, doesn't it? Because you, you might depends. need to amend it. Yeah. If it's like in a forest or something where there's loads of nice stuff growing anyway, there's plenty of nutrients in the soil, then you're going to be able to just plant and let it go. But you do want it to have a, a best life as possible. So if need be, dig a hole and put some soil in it and then plant it in there. So I remember Breeder Steve talking about doing some tricks that he did when he was first starting to grow, grow, grow like planting mm. a, uh, burying a banana underneath a seed. You know that kind of thing like that. Mm. So when the plant got old enough, it had, it had the, that rotten banana to work with and things yeah. like that. There's different ways of getting around these problems. No, but in it. most, depending on as you said, Mackie, in most most places in Ireland, and I'd say in the UK, our grounds are very fucking green and fertile. Mm-hmm. So no matter where you plant, you're gonna be okay. All you have to do is really fucking really brew up a tea maybe once in a while and fucking drop it out yeah. there's not too much work you have to do with a gorilla if you if you set it up properly but if you, you don't rain for like to... seven days then you gotta go put water on it but it takes like seven days of no <laughs> rain which is rare in uh you know in the island in the, in the US. oh fuck yeah <laughs> but so when you when you do that as well it's something to take in consideration when you're looking for a spot if it should, should be close to some water like a, a river or a stream or something so if you need to then you can go there collect water and then take it back to the plant don't plant it next to the river you don't know to, to a little bit away but close enough so you don't have to walk too far with heavy bottles of water when you so, need to and also so it doesn't close enough that it doesn't look like it's weird why the heck is this guy carrying this giant bucket once a week over to this mm-hmm. bucket, this thing mm-hmm. and walking across the field with it again you mm-hmm. know <laughs> uh, so Southern motorway grower, the SMG in the chat there, he said that he's had 10 harvests, never been caught. So, mm-hmm. you know, it's doable and he gets decent yields out of this as well. So, anybody who wants to think mm-hmm. of a way to do it, this shit is possible. I know uh, us guys on the panel might not have had much success, but there's plenty of people out there who do have, uh, you know, a good time doing this. So, you just got to find the right spot and nature mm-hmm. will do its thing. It, you know, it, it, you got to protect it when it's small from being eaten by shit like rabbits and deers, things like that, you know, if that's uh, going to be a problem. Put a little fence around them or something so the animals can't get to it. But obviously don't make it so you, you put the fence around and then everybody can see there's a fence over there. Let's go and check out what's going on. Hey, you know, you've got to try and be discreet as possible. A <laughs> little bit of garden wire, you know, that, that them like chicken wire fences. Well, a little bit of chicken uh, wire type yeah. thing. Yeah. It doesn't need to be tall. Mm-hmm. Like maybe about a half of uh, a foot off the ground, maybe. Mm-hmm that's it and then, then it should be pretty safe you don't need to go back to water it very much if it, if it's good soil then it'll be able to eat all the food it needs from the ground you only need to visit it a couple of times throughout its whole grow and you'll be sweet you'll have weed <clears throat> but it's just finding that spot man the spot is the most important bit finding the good place it's uh, it. one thing i want to mention about this maybe we're going to get to it but like it is a huge problem and like if you've watched any documentaries or any talk to anyone about uh, even Jorge has mentioned this in, in a couple of his videos. I'm not sure if he talked. We talked about it when we talked to him. But um, don't leave your fucking bullshit pollution like fucking garbage out there either for mm. reasons yeah. of they're gonna find your shit and realize that there's shit going on. But also, who the fuck are you to leave your fucking garbage out there? You know, like be nice to fucking mother nature sponsor. and uh, yeah, she'll be nice to you back and. Uh, yeah, don't like pollute the place. You know, don't dump your fucking pesticide or don't. Well, don't use pesticides in the first place. But like, you know, just don't so, fuck up the environment. Yeah, so SMG is idea. saying here he got one point five kilos last year dry weight mm-hmm. out of his fucking gorilla grow. There is absolutely no wrong with that. You know what I'm saying? So once like, a year, yeah. that's his shit. You know, because he's not able to grow indoors. This is mm-hmm. his only way of doing it. So yeah. this is what he does, and he does fucking well, man. It's do as long as you find a good spot then you're gonna you're gonna do well 
you know, you just have to find that nice south basin. It's going to get plenty of sun. It's got plenty of water in the ground. You know, you pick good strains. You, you know, if you can grow them on the windowsill in the house or something for a week or two before you plant them outdoors, all that kind of shit. You know, whatever you can do to increase the chances of survival, the better. And if you grow autos as well, autos take about 10 to 12 weeks. So you don't have to wait and, you know, you plant them in springtime and then you wait until the end of September, October, or even November before the plant's mm-hmm. done to chop it down. You can, I mean, if you want super big ones, then that, that do that. But the bigger they are, the harder they are to hide. So it's better to just go for the autos, you know, plant many. And then you, you know, just don't hope to get them all back. It's, it's rare that's going to happen, in my opinion. I mean, we had a SMG here say, but he's never had a failed crop and he's never had any problems, man. That's, that's mm-hmm. fucking sweet. So pr- plant more than you need. Just it's better to have too many than not enough, you know? And then when, it, when harvest time does come, what, what would you do? You'd show up there with uh, bags, boxes. You know, want boxes. Yeah, I'd, I'd, know, I'd take like air like, yeah, seal bags. Yeah. Black balaclava with some garbage bags. And, um, <laughs> <laughs> make sure people see that. And, uh, the sack made out of cloth. <laughs> yeah. So you can tiptoe. You know? <laughs> yeah. No, don't do that. You don't yeah. want, if you need a mask, I guess, if it's cold. But... Yeah, go, go like when the sun's setting, you know, in the evening time, just as it starts to get dark, go there then because you won't be able to be seen so easily. And then just chop it down, put it in a box. You know, if you if you don't have a dog, ask your friend if you can borrow theirs. You know, just take their, take your friend's dog for a walk or something. And just go there, chop it down, put it in a bag. You know, if you need to keep that shit airproof, then put it in something airtight, but don't leave it sealed airtight for too long because it will go moldy quickly. Yeah. You know, mm-hmm. it's only if you've got short distances to take it, you don't want the humidity to build up in the case too much. But that's an option Indeed. too. Yeah. Well, there is Indeed. a lot of people that do their outdoor grow, they always f- prepare a place for their outdoor to, to dry it. So they'll go, they'll chop it, they'll dry it outdoors, and then they'll spend a bit of time out trimming it down into manageable sizes and then mm. bag it up to go off. Billy Summers says they did a couple patches last year. Everyone got nabbed, but one, everyone got nabbed, but one, but I got it uh, way too late and it was withered and brown and crispy, but it was huge, biggest I've ever done around six to seven foot. No way. Unlucky, man. You know, try again this year, though. Maybe that's why everybody can come in. Are you going to give a uh, gorilla growing a shot this, this, this year? I mean, everybody should really try and find yourself a spot. It's only a few seeds and it just, you know, five seeds, maybe. Just go plant five seeds out there. You don't have to be special ones. And TG has seed, which you, you know you don't. You got not got Hermes seed, have you? That's all good shit, really. But GB, you got Hermes seed, right? I have shit tons of seed that I'm going to be giving out to people at the 420 event. Mm-hmm. Oh, for um, your thing now. It's their regs. Mm-hmm. Uh, they're all pretty good. Um, the the only reason why they've Hermes has been light leaks and me being a fucking idiot. Yeah, maybe not best then because. <laughs> You've also got to think if you're planting regulars out there, you've got to go back, make sure that none are male. You have to go back and check. You have to do that at the right time. And if there is males, it could pollinate somebody else's crop, and that's not something you Mm. want to do. You know, try and plant just females out there. Autos are good, man. Just drop some autos in the ground, come back 10 weeks, 12 weeks later. No, the ones, yeah, the ones I have are for to give people to, as they are walking by their flower beds in the middle of their towns and villages and things, to just Mm -hmm. drop a couple as they're walking by and hopefully some might fucking sprout. Mm -hmm. Uh, One thing I want to mention too is this doesn't occur everywhere, but here in Saskatchewan and also Alberta and also Manitoba, we grow a fuckload of hemp, industrial hemp. Which is also cannabis sativa. Uh, it's it's a political and fucking regulatory differentiation, not a botanical one. Thus, the pollen from said industrial hemp, which is generally monoecious, i.e., it's it's made to hermaphrodite, so it can produce the most seeds in the most plants because they're grown for oil and fiber mostly. That pollen, when floating around on the wind, which if you're in Saskatchewan, you'll know how fucking windy it gets. That will pollinate your outdoor plants. So best to uh, plan your grows. Also, if you're near a hemp farm or you have any issues or you know people who have is, had issues with their outdoor grows getting pollinated, find out where that is and go away from it. But it's really hard because pollen travels for a long fucking way, especially on a big flat plain like we have here. So 
um that's a thing when i when i grow outdoors here just i, I do four plants every year just you know because i can and because it's fun um they always get pollinated right. so yeah i've gotten seeds every year for like the last five years Damn so man. yeah i mean i don't care because it's not really for anything but just to say hey look there's some weed plants but that's it. it's nice when you got the spare seeds too isn't it? because like, some people we, we underestimate being experienced growers and we've all been doing this for a long time so most of us have just got like fucking shit loads of seeds and we, we can spare five seeds but for new growers people who are just getting into this shit and they're looking where can i get five seeds from and they go and look on uh on the internet see five seeds i got a 25 30 quid and i've got to go just throw this outdoors so yeah. it's it's harder for them to do but if you you know you have confidence in the spot then it'll be worth it man i mean you can get a ridiculous amount of weed at the end it, smg said here as well which is another good point uh exit planning is essential that's what you need to be looking for as well you're in a good place for the plants to grow but you also need to be able to get out of there quickly undetected when the plants come down so take that into consideration as well when you're looking for your spot but get out there and fucking look man you know drive the car somewhere you know a little bit five ten minutes away from the house to have a look around see if there's any nice places you know, if you take a, a camera with you, you, can, you just go in photography. You know, <laughs> if you walk the mm -hmm. dog, there's lots yeah. of things you can do. You know, good idea. walk around with a canvas and a few oil paints and be like, I'm looking for a nice spot to paint. You might or a metal favorite. detector, man. That, <laughs> nobody will question <laughs> you if you have one of those fucking metal detectors. No, things. some people do, man. There's different rules, and it? it's like, well, yeah. really? doing metal detecting on my land and shit. Oh. Yeah, there's so all these rules. Come fucking chasing you. Yeah, well, yeah. Be I mean, careful as well where you go <laughs> because some <laughs> farmers will fucking chase you with fucking yeah well, don't trespass and if you do yeah. don't like well don't just idiots. yeah don't really if you yeah. can help Best it. places is public you know public out uh, like yeah. public parks owned and stuff. Lands, parks fucking but again road. don't don't yeah. ruin the environment when you're there like be respectful no so. be respectful exactly no matter where you are even if you're on mm. yeah you know occupied land <laughs> well i think that'll be the prize for this week's uh we'll do five seeds that's what we'll do. Uh, which one should we give away? Uh, which we one have some AK forty seven. That's a very hardy strain for outdoor ground, no, we don't especially in Europe. Super skunk would be all outdoors, wouldn't it? Uh, super skunk would. Mm. Um, but since he's got that gorilla gusto that's made specifically for outdoor in northern Europe areas, so man, that if you really got a challenging yeah, one, give time. that no, one. No, but uh, the uh, beans we have, the Percy beans, what, what ones oh, do we no. have, which would you say would oh, uh, northern lights, man? Northern lights, yeah, man. northern Sweet lights outside. is perfect, yeah, for outdoors. yeah, perfect. So there you go, five northern lights autos, five northern light autos for you to gorilla grow if you comment on this video and you yeah, remember yeah. a Percy's. Oh, I'm even going nice. to comment on this myself, that's right. <laughs> so and of course you'll get high and homegrown sticker with that as well and maybe a panel sticker or two as well we'll see but go and comment on this video tell us are you going to do gorilla growing of course you are of course you are tell us about any gorilla grow which you've done previously in the past you know tell us what shape you would make your edibles just whatever you like <laughs> lots of different ways to uh to comment on this video and be interact with the show so go ahead and do that. It's super cool. And if you if you listen to this show, if you downloaded it, then you can still head over to our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash high and homegrown, and you can comment on the video there. It'll be in the most recent live streams. So don't be shy. Go over there, comment, and you can win five beans worldwide, man. Worldwide. We'll send them anywhere. A knife onto SMG. He's after putting so much info on things, mm -hmm, just mm -hmm. of, of little, like really useful little snippets. Mm -hmm. All the way through, man. Grower, man. 10 Stop years it, of the man. game. Big up to 10 harvest as well and the smg said as well do autos autos are good uh pre-planning the exit is essential yeah he's, he's lo loads of good points coming here from smg so nice one bro appreciate that and smg i think he's over on Persis, but he's also on uh instagram you can find him as well uh, so if you have any questions about this shit, then just ask him and yeah. he, he will be able to sort you out especially if you're in the uk so he yes. he's uh he's you know by the word motorway rather than highway you can, you can kind of guess <laughs> but it's inspired me a little bit that as smg i think i'm going to go pop myself some beans and go and find myself mm -hmm. a spot as well and there's some motorway places close to me i think that is going to be a good spot it's going to have to crush it makes me bit. like we always wanted to buy an acreage like a, like a farm without a farm basically for anybody that doesn't yeah. know what that is yeah, yeah. um 
But yeah, every time I go out to people's farms or acreages, I'm just like, man, you could put your weed right there. You could grow weed. <laughs> yeah, you know what and I'm saying? I, I, I do want to do that. Like a big, like not a big, but just like a really like honed in outdoor go in like mm-hmm. really good soil and and do it. Cause like I say, I've done it a, a couple times in my garden here just for the fuck of it really. But to, yeah, to really do it. Um, yeah, yeah. I've never he's, done that. Victory garden, man. Be really cool. So props to everybody that does do this. Like, yeah, and yeah. actually like, for you real, know, this so. is free weed. <laughs> it's, it's hard, yeah, man. It's, it. it's harder than a tent, I'd say. So yeah, for sure. Yeah. And I mean, to have the bollocks to just plant it and leave it there as well. Just leave it. Like you, that's an act of faith for sure mm-hmm. <laughs> because yeah. you don't you every time you go back is something to consider every time you go back you're wearing a little track a path somebody can see you there lots of different reasons why you shouldn't go and visit that shit should be planted and left visit if you absolutely have to because it hasn't rained for a week and it oh. might need water do that don't then. take your don't take your phone either probably that i don't oh, know that's probably, yeah no that's a good idea Cracking is a motherfucker. And it goes about days... saying, really, leave your phone at home more often. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's a good one. But I mean, the cops here now have this thing where they can just drive around and their cars will automatically scan every license plate they pass. And now they're going to like ding you if you have an expired plate or a registered license or whatever the fuck. Whoa. But they don't even have to do anything anymore. Right. So like surveillance is getting fucked. So do, they... do take caution. They even have to, they have the laws here now that like you, they, you have to give them if the guards ask you for, you say if they take, give me your phone and what's your nope. passcode, you have to give it to them or else you can't nope. go to prison. What is this America? What is America? We are doing this is America. America is America. Please, the fifth motherfucker. I wish I could. No, we that's don't have ridiculous, the G. That, that's talk about invasion of privacy. Yeah, man. Yeah. So you want everything that's in my phone. You want my bank accounts. You want my photographs. Yeah. You want everything I've got, right? Nope, yeah. not happening. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I said never, ever get my phone. I'd never, ever give them the passcode to my phone. There's not that there's anything fucking in there that shouldn't be, but it's just, it's none of their fucking it's business. None of their business right. That's what I'm talking you know? about. Yep. I have my fingerprint and I would cut my <laughs> thumb off in front of them. <laughs> So they couldn't use my. F- I actually dissolved my fingerprint with ethanol the other day, so my my fingerprint thing doesn't work where they shit right now. <laughs> it's pretty funny. <laughs> um, anyway, yeah, be careful, guys, if you're doing this. Yeah, I, I, of course. Yeah, be extra cautious if you buy busy roads like motorways. You know, be very careful, man. Don't go near them roads. You know, just on the edges. Try and find a spot there. Is, don't be driving down the motorway and then being like, oh, hazard lights and pulling over on the hard <laughs> shoulder and then looking for a spot that's very dangerous. Don't do stupid things like that, man. Be safe, mm. be, you know, plan it out properly beforehand. You don't want to get killed over this shit or badly injured. Just be very careful. Please. You know, you're going outside in the wild, man. It's dangerous out there. Be very careful. As SMG just said, <laughs> he said, don't leave any receipts from your purchase compost. A schoolboy <laughs> error that he made several years ago. <laughs> so be careful. Yeah. And that yeah. will, you wouldn't be leaving any of this if you brought your shit with you yeah you know i'm just thinking practice that leave no trace thing like they always mm-hmm. teach us outdoor people mm-hmm. nothing behind but you I mean, know not even the footprints yeah have leave to. only footprints is what they say but don't even do that don't, don't even, even do, do that, that man <laughs> nobody's been there that's it that's what you want to see would it be sweet man so head over to the youtube video if you haven't already <laughs> and make sure you're a member of percy's grow room too and then uh you know we'll send you five northern lights for you to do your gorilla grow. So when you're out walking around or just go have a picnic with the family or something and just keep an eye out for a good spot. See if you see if you're up for it, man. Never know. So we have some questions as well for the list of Q and away. Is that everything for the gorilla growing? I think that's everything covered, right? Pretty yeah, much. Pretty much, yeah. Mm-hmm. Just be careful, guys. Yeah. Planning, planning, planning. Mm-hmm. Well, what's the, t- the, the saying? They say piss poor planning. Prior planning and preparation prevents piss poor performance. That's yeah. yeah. Yes. The seven Ps, is it? The seven Ps. Right. So we have questions as well. We have uh, one from uh, Gunja Mama over at the forum. She says, hey, guys, hope we're all happy and high. Just wondering if anyone knows a good ratio for Keith to butter when infusing. It would be nice and strong for someone with very high tolerance. I saved 40 grams of Keith and just unsure how much butter I should use. Uh, want it to be strong as fuck and don't want to waste it by overdoing it. Any advice, Percy Peeps? And of course, this one is good for March. March, you know all about this yeah. stuff. 
Although I honestly don't use a lot of keef in a lot of my edibles, at 40 grams is a lot. So <sighs> I looked at this question earlier and if she wants them really strong, like I don't think you'd have to use all 40 grams of keef to make something really powerful. Hmm. So, I mean, you should, is that what you said, TG? No. Don't take my advice. <laughs> <laughs> just forget about the butter, I mean, just melt the keef. And spread that on things. Decarb the teeth and just <laughs> yeah. Right. yeah. Well, yeah, you <laughs> could. I, you could technically do that too. And the potency of keef generally hovers around what, like thirty percent, kind of thing. Yeah. if you know, yeah. we'll say yeah. just run with thirty. So that's thirty percent of forty grams. That's a lot of THC. Mm -hmm. So, and it would infuse yeah. easier too, right? Yeah. Not having all that plant shit. Yeah. So you, what, what would you suggest? Use half of it, 20 grams into, say, 250 grams of butter? Would that work? Yeah, I was thinking, like, starting out with half. And then you could probably also work backwards if you if you figure on average that the keef is about 30% hmm. THC, then you could probably use, like, an online calculator to sort of work Ooh. backwards to well, help hold Where would you be, be able to a... find one of those online calculators, Mark? You can find one at bitemepodcast.com. <laughs> I heard that's a pretty good one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So that, that's a good one. Um, so that might be one way to go about it. But I'd maybe start with half. Because I don't know how long it would take you guys to save up 40 grams of keef, but it would take me a bit. Mm. Yeah, it'd keep, take a while. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Unless so. you need dry sift or something. An ounce and a half kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. fucking hell. Damn, yeah, yeah fucking hell. Didn't you, mm. Yeah, didn't you do the maths there? But yeah, ounce and a half. Shit, that's yeah. a fucking yeah. lot that's, of keef. That's a lot of keef. Like, I'm usually, <laughs> yeah, it's a, it's a fuck ton. And I'm usually losing like 40 grams for a couple of cups of butter but i'm using like trim and shake so 40 grams of keef is gonna be way more powerful than anything you could always just make it super potent and then just eat half the amount kind of thing too maybe yeah yeah i mean there's certain ways yeah if it turns out super powerful you don't have to know. eat it all though i, I could make it super yeah. strong and eat it the way it is and be super fucked huh. don't well that would work for you i just <laughs> yeah. made this like mango hot sauce and when i did the calculations i think it was about 24 milligrams per teaspoon nice. and i was like well fuck that's so strong for me that's <laughs> yeah but you're only gonna you're only gonna use it as hot sauce though you're not gonna like be drinking it no i know but i'd be wanting to use more than a teaspoon like i like hot sauce it's pretty it is pretty spicy but i probably I gotta, a bit too strong <laughs> i still need to make that i want to make that one. Oh god yeah it's good I should send you my bottle because I don't think I can. I don't think I could consume it very easily. <laughs> so we didn't. Did we so have strong. an answer for this one then? The, it was the, what was the plan? Use half of it. Yeah, and, use about half. And, and we'll about, yeah, sample it and then see what you got. You could always dilute it, I guess. Yeah. If you make, if it was too strong. Yeah. yeah and you'd say that was so two hundred and fifty grams of butter would work well with that. You think yeah. Much? Yeah, that's like a that's half good. pound. A half pound of butter, 250 grams, give or take. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's about right. I think Sweet. that'd be a good starting point. Try that. end up with something pretty strong. And let us know what it's... crazy trips you go on over the forum. That's let us right. know your stories. Yes. <laughs> yeah, it's going to be some strong butter. <laughs> I think so. <laughs> mm -hmm. Make a nice cake. We have one for Bubble Hawk here as well in, in regards to the gorilla growing thing. The, um, in regards to picking up your, picking your spot for, for a gorilla grow, should one test the soil first with a simple plant to ensure the soil and the chosen spot will yield as expected when picking your spot is it advisable to have a spot that is accessible for more than one entry point uh, um, from, from more than one entry point more for grower safety i.e way in and way out so uh yeah i wouldn't i wouldn't plant a plant there to test the soil but it would be good to have some of their companion plants mm. there you know so that smells really strong so insects are more inclined to go to that you know, use garlic or mints, uh, <laughs> onions, spring onions are good for that mm. shit. And then they, because it smells stronger, the insects are going to go there instead of the cannabis plant. But they can still attack the plant. It still might happen. That's just mm. the uh, look of the drawer. A healthy plant will be able to fight against it. That's how nature works. So the plant will probably be okay as long as it's strong enough to fight off an insect infestation in the mm. first place. So, and have a look around and see if there's plants and if there's like stuff that's grown there anyway it means that it's going to grow there's going to be enough nutrients there yeah i was yeah. gonna say building yeah. on smg's comments pre-planning you know find mm -hmm. out what pests are in that area and then 
you know, either don't plan if it's like fucking crazy for aphids or something, mm -hmm. find a new place or put like, like Mackie and the guy said with companion planting really helps, but also don't make it like this garden of Eden where there's like fucking apple trees and shit. And people are like, why the fuck is there like onions and <laughs> fucking rhubarb and shit over there? That looks weird. Yeah. yeah. Also so. worry about, you know, planting something like marigolds around your plants might sound like yeah. great, great outdoors, but it's also going to draw a lot of attention. They're very bright. Yeah, it's very bright mm -hmm. and colorful. Uh, nettles are a great addition mm -hmm. because yeah. they kind of look like weed and they grow wild everywhere. So people mm -hmm. don't really take notice of them mm -hmm. and they hurt like a motherfucker if you touch them. So people kind of stay idea, away actually. from them. I've had people walk past my plants in the backyard and like, that's the only plant there. And they're like, they don't notice them. They're like, mm -hmm. that's a weed plant. <laughs> so but yeah take your precautions i want to speak to the soil thing though um just quickly you don't need to plant a plant there to test like greenbeard said it's a really good point is if there's other like luscious plants there it's probably pretty good soil if you're really concerned you can use those little soil test kits that you can buy where you mix the thing and then it turns like a color and you match it to the nitrogen and the phosphorus and the potassium and then you can adjust it as needed if if you need but if it's like I say, if, if there's other plants and Greenbeard is a really good point that if there's lots of other plants growing there, it's probably got a lot of good nutrients. So there might be some competition from those other plants for the cannabis. So that might be an issue, but cannabis is a pretty aggressively growing plant. So mm -hmm. it, it, it's pretty competitive as it goes. Um, but if you do need to reamend stuff, do so. And, and make sure you're looking at your soil structure too, not just like if there's NPK in there, because if you have like a really clay rich soil or if it's not well draining or if it gets like really saturated when it gets wet or something like that, you might have issues with certain issues, right? So uh, know your soil too. And then if, if it's like really clay, for example, like we mentioned Breeder Steve, he used to put bananas and stuff dig a big hole like he always does and then you can put different shit in there like add some compost mm -hmm. so you can break up the soil structure make it a little looser maybe uh don't bring any perlite or anything like that that's going to look unnatural but like you know natural additions like manure and shit like that so mm -hmm. just pre-preparation again is is the key in this so for um if if it will be clear in them a small area you say around of the if there was other plants around to would that get rid of the the fight or the demand for the the nutrients around them if you cleared them away so say well, if there was a couple of other like fucking say other weeds as in like fucking yeah i mean you want to fucking lead, like indian lettuce or fucking whatever whatever that fucking lion's lettuce or whatever the shit is well gb's gonna on a roll man <laughs> lots of fuckings there gb fucking fucking, fucking. Okay. <laughs> man i'm sorry this fucking this week is absolutely fucking <laughs> see savage, the man. I'm, I'm, I'm nationally mashed i must say yeah man I, i'm no. boxing the fuck out of this room too <laughs> clear them out man but like Unless you're digging out the roots of some of these, you, you probably won't have too much luck. But yeah, obviously, mm -hmm. just just like you're preparing like a garden sort of thing, but not conspicuously. So, uh, so yeah, we have more questions regarding the, the gorilla growing here as well. For one from Savans, I live in an area that once upon a time farmers cultivated hemp. So there is an abundance of ditch weed around. Uh, what precautions, well, there's two questions. What precautions should one take to try and prevent or minimize the chances of your plants getting pollinated? And two, if mm. growing autos, is there an optional time to plant as to minimize the risk of wild pollination? Hmm. Yeah, plants oh, early, course. then the photoperiod plants won't be making flowers yeah. before you harvested, so that would be okay. But and if, if that'd be the hemp, easy, that's be the way so you could avoid the most of it, you probably won't avoid it all. But, yeah, and it's but, hemp. Yeah. It will, will hemp pollinate. Hemp is generally yeah, auto flower. Yes. Yeah, yes. yeah, it will one hundred percent. That's okay. the problem I have here. Right. Yeah. So and then that's like half hemp, half cannabis. Yeah, I mean hemp. Seed, all hemp the, is. The, the, the flower a, will be just regular bud though, but the seed would be yeah. half and half. Yeah, all mm -hmm. hemp means is it's under zero point three percent THC and through selective breeding by hemp farmers under those pretenses over the years, they haven't focused on like big fat buds and yeah, but industrial dripping. hemp though, isn't it? That's what you get yeah, yeah. by. Is that, that's exactly, really man. tall, isn't it? That's like, yeah, super it's, tall, it's, basically. it's bred to be exactly like you say, super tall because they want the fiber. They want big fat seeds in it and they want it to be hermaphroditic or monoecious because if every plant is producing both male and female male, flowers then every plant is going to produce seeds and generally i guess it's it's better than having a few males with a bunch of females 
um, producing seeds because if you're planting regulars 50 50 right you can't right. guarantee you're getting and that's a huge waste of space because you only need like three males basically so yeah, yeah yeah you don't want those genetics in your weed um in the seeds so mm -hmm. it's it's hard to really other than planting away from that shit or like knowing your prevailing winds and like you know Even hoping that they yeah exactly hoping they always blow north or whatever then yep tough yeah not really much you can do about that that's just the way nature goes man but you can always make hash out of it you just got seeds in it make hash out of it man no, that's still good some good shit or edible or uh or oils or something you can do that or too. break the seeds out of it and smoke it yeah it's interesting that it just it's like like uh escaped now it's it's a wild acclimated version of this industrial hemp that used to be unless it's like getting dropped by the farmers every year but uh no, no it's it, still out there in some states yeah, in the u.s man it just grows in the ditches right that's cool mm -hmm. yeah and, you know it's it's strange some of those states that that it's still growing in you know, the police know where it's growing and, and it's always been, even when it's illegal, a big tourist attraction to be you know, take your picture in your, or do a, a weed plant thing, you know? So they would always sit there with cameras, watch it yeah. very closely, make sure nobody would cut it down and try and take it, even though it was just, you know, ditch weed, but still. <laughs> People do it at the hemp farms here, man. Shit, they would be in man. dicks about it anyway, you know? Hemp farmers have problems with people ripping off their shit here, or they used mm -hmm. to, so... You're the guy who grows that shit weed, man. Yeah, so what exactly. about the optimal time to plant outside to minimize the risk of pollination? Now, that's going to be an important one, isn't it? That's a really good question. Er, early is better, I would say there. Yeah. yeah. Most of those, like in my experience, dealing now with hemp for the last year and a half, it generally is, it matures after 90 to 110 days. So like, however, whenever they spring up, you know, after about, when do they start flowering? So, it, so it's weeks. like that's like auto flowering they don't know it's not like photo period they wait until yeah, yeah. the end of august yeah. september before they start flowering yeah no they're just they're autos hemp is auto Lame. yeah mm -hmm. i'd say start your hemp. autos indoor earlier and then get a head mm -hmm. start on them mm -hmm. yeah that'd be a good plan and maybe avoid most of it that way yeah as early as you possibly can would be my advice mm -hmm. to avoid um, good course. question man good question and good answer that's, that's it awesome. is a really good question yeah, yeah. uh and then fire ant what one from fire ant. it was regarding the soil your soil i think uh hello there thank you for this recipe regarding tg's super soil recipe over at persons i'm trying yes. to create my own super soil but i remember cool. someone mentioning cocoa peat was no good for living soils what can i use as i make my own compost and peat moss yeah. is a no-go for me yeah it's a good question I get the question uh, on occasion, and cocoa, cocoa is actually totally fine to if to use. It's actually more like environmentally sustainable in a way. Being, I don't particularly care for it because it's super far away. But peat moss mining is not super great either. I assume that's why you don't want to the peat, or maybe it's just unavailable to you or more expensive over there. But either way, yeah, cocoa core is totally fine to use. Um, there's other shit like uh, wood bark compost and stuff, um, which can be, you know, e each medium has its different components and, and therefore different properties. Uh, the, wind, the wood bark is, I don't like using it completely because if there's any non-composted wood, some of the bacteria can actually rob the soil of the nitrogen that's in there to use in the decomposition process of the wood. Um, but that said, you know, if you find a good, properly composted uh, uh version of that it's it's totally fine there's other stuff like using compost mixed with kind of i guess vermicompost too but the thing with compost and, and manures and stuff like that is it's generally very very heavy in organic matter and it doesn't drain very well by itself that's the beauty of peat and cocoa coir is that they're very light but they also they're able to like incorporate all the other shit and retain moisture and, and do all this other good stuff um, but realistically, yeah, any, anything like, even like hemp, uh, what do they call it? De decorticated hemp fiber, um, not very available, but something like that, where you just basically rip the hemp fiber apart into the little strings, shove it in a pot and use that as a medium mixed with, with the other shit that you need. But yeah, on, in my opinion, I would say cocoa is probably your best bet. So, um, I have no issue using it as an alternative as peat. I, I've been meaning to actually mix up a batch and test that out and, and see if, if my mix actually really works because I'd like to offer alternatives to peat 
Um, but peat is readily available to me in the in the in the soil that I use. But yeah, um, they're phasing that out of all soils in the UK. And that's being removed from all soils, man. Yeah, crazy but, shit. But um, cocoa is okay, and uh, yeah, probably cocoa. We did have best, one but... quick one we want to cover there before we we finish this shit up. Uh, can you make hash with AVB from Noxy? Ooh. What's up, Noxy? You couldn't really like wash AVB uh, to make like bubble hash or, or a dry ice hash with it because you've already mm. you melted the trichomes on it when you, yeah, you exactly. run through the vaporizer. You know, you you basically turn the trichomes into goo, and it's now embedded into what's left in the AVB. I would say extraction is your best option there. Making yes. hash because like Monkey exactly just said, all the trichome heads, which is the thing you're after, mm. are already gone because you've gobbed them up and inhaled it. So you probably just have a bunch of like fucking amorphous residual stuff and maybe some heads, the more silis silicaceous or silicaceous silica rich parts of the trichome that don't fucking vaporize. <laughs> Sorry, but mm -hmm. yeah, so I would do what Mackie does and make RSO out of it, if anything. Yeah. Yep. Or coconut now for that, oil. I just get a 99% isopropyl. And because I, I cleaned my grinder the other day and uh -huh. uh, with isopropyl, you know, I just left it soaking in there for a while. And then I cleaned my Mighty with isopropyl too. So it's all been soaked and all this stuff's going into the same ISO. And then when I was finished with the ISO, rather than throwing it away, I poured it into a jar with my, I don't know, like an ounce of AVB. And let that sit there overnight, drained it off, filtered it. And now I've just got this jar of of ISO with I know THC dissolved into it, but I have to evaporate off, but I can't be asked doing that right now. So it just sits there and evaporates naturally for now. <laughs> yeah, you can do that too. You just leave how it long, there and sit. And how long does that take? Because I'm doing that right now too. And it, no, like it can take like a week, man. It takes ages. You, you can the mine's been longer than a week. It's taken forever. It'll yeah, take a really, really long. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It evaporates yeah. best at 70 degrees C. I mean, an easy way uh, to do it is uh use a hot rice cooker. Bath. Yeah, hot water bath is a good way. You know, if you just keep using boiling water, because if it, as long as it's over 70 degrees C, the alcohol will evaporate and it still takes fucking ages even then. Right. Uh, yeah, hot water. Yeah. So when you say hot water, like like put the jar in some hot water, like boiling water. Boil away. Take right. a, no, take because a you, pot. you can't have flame. Because... No, I know. That's why I have a like a hot plate because I do have a gas stove. Yeah. So that's why I'm when doing it, it this way right mm -hmm. now. But mm -hmm. yeah, when I did it, I just did put it in a crock pot on low, got the water up to temperature, and just lowered the jar in, you know, so that it wouldn't float, but just the hot the hot water in the crock pot was hot enough to. I mean, it, all of our uh, the alcohol was gone in a day. I mean, it's completely the, that seventy eight Celsius temperature you mentioned is actually the boiling point, and it will evaporate um, at lower temperatures, at like right. room temperature. Mm -hmm. If you spill ISO on the ground, it goes like blah, blah, and it's gone. Yeah, yeah. But my advice to you and to Marge um, would be to put a fan on it. Just blow some air. Air movement will help to to mm. evaporate. I, I the... have um, a small heater, just like a little fan heater, and I switch that on to the hottest setting, and it blows warm air at me. I like warm air. And if we just hold the, the jar in front of it, the jar gets heated up, and the, you know yeah. it's warm air as well, and that evaporates it off real quick. Well, just... I say real quick, okay. but it still takes ages to that. get it done. Do, yeah. do really be careful with, when you get those, because the vapors will still be there, and if, if you hit the flash point, um, which mm -hmm. is just means there's enough vapor in the air to create ignition if there's an ignition source it won't just like it's not like it's going to just blow up mm -hmm. but if there is an ignition source which there probably is if you have an electric heater running mm -hmm. that that yeah i see it's only be, I've, I've only got a little bit here it's not even a lot. just be careful that's all that's why i'm paranoid that's why it's, it's slowly evaporating on a windowsill right now but yeah. put a fan it's on gonna it. take six months but yeah put I'll a fan and that. blow it directly on <laughs> that'll make it go faster or a rice yeah, cook. i use rice cookers in mine perfectly yeah but the thing is, is the way you do it without heat, you're not going to probably be able to purge as much ISO out as you normally would with using heat and especially using a vacuum oven. Mm -hmm. um, because, yeah, you just did. The boiling point is important once you get into like residual traces of, of solvent in your RSO that that won't come out just naturally anymore because they're kind of like they're not molecularly bonded, but they're they're more stuck in in the RSO more for lack of a better term. So. And uh, Backblast asks, can you use Everclear? Yeah, you can use Absolutely. Everclear. That's yeah. technically what I'm doing right now. You should use yeah. Everclear. That's 95% pure food-grade alcohol. Perfect. It's expensive, though. Mm. That's the only thing. Uh, about $16 a, a, a quart here. Really? 
Ours yeah. is fucking 50 bucks for 750 mil. Damn. Where do you buy it? Because in Ontario, you can't buy it. I yeah, I, I just Googled it. We have Depends a... on what state you're in down here. So, you know, down here, where I am, it's just it's cheaper than vodka. <laughs> yeah, you get it at the liquor huh. store here, but you have to, like, ask for it. I don't think they just display it. Yeah, it's hard yeah, to get ethanol, that shit in the UK. That's ethanol. Ethanol is your best bet for a solvent just because of its lower toxicity. Um, isopropyl is the other alcohol. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. And that's what I use because it's way cheaper. It's mm-hmm. 35 bucks for a, a gallon shit of it. Load, yeah. And it works just as well. Um, and it's just, good for cleaning. And it's good for loads of yeah, other yeah. things. It's man. fucking awesome stuff. <laughs> yeah. yeah, we use it all the time at work too. So, and there are companies that use it as an extraction uh, solvent. They just mm-hmm. you can you just got to properly purge it. So, yeah, now is what, this, this is the ninety one percent isopropyl alcohol that you can get in the pharmacy, right? Ninety nine percent here, but yeah, ninety nine point nine nine percent. All right, gotta be really careful about any contaminants that might be in there or, or yeah. shit. Because you don't, don't Rasher use. Rasher in the chat's asking if there's a European equivalent, and then I think not that I've found really. Well, yeah. yeah, you can use vodka because it's high alcohol and shit, but he won't somebody get somebody said Polish the vodka. Results. Yeah, yeah, no. vodka is like forty percent. It's got mostly water and well, Polish vodka yeah. was supposed to be a lot higher. Oh, was it? Yeah, like yeah. 90, the higher like, the proof, uh, the better. That's like eighty percent or something like that. Mm-hmm. And vodka is good because it doesn't have like like rum and rye and whiskey have like color, right? And they, so they have other stuff in it than just water and ethanol. Mm-hmm. That's all vodka literally is, is it's water and ethanol mixed together. Yeah. So use that, yeah. Or don't, well, don't use vodka because it's weak. Yeah, but Lots anyway. of good questions, yeah. So <laughs> we, we, we'll cover that in one of the episodes in the future, how to make um, extracts like that. I was just like thinking that. we should. Yeah. It seems like people have a lot of questions. Mm-hmm. myself included <laughs> that's my job man i love talking about that shit <laughs> yeah extractions but we, uh next week we've already got it off uh we're going to discuss nutrient deficiencies next week you know how to fix the yeah. plant when you have problems because we haven't covered that yet and we'll, um, the week after that we're going to talk about <laughs> uh <laughs> bugs Meg. and shit and then videos are already up on youtube or scheduled and shit well, so I'm please share them with your friends make sure what everybody reading knows. for Fuck. what you're reading for hey mister <laughs> What you reading <laughs> for? Come here. Yeah. Hey, come here. <laughs> and he pushes him. So, Definitely not yeah. a physics major. I don't like what you said <laughs> about the Christian stuff. Well, then forgive me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Anyway, yes. Bill Hicks, legend. Yeah, man. So everybody, you know, leave a comment on this video. Uh, maybe you have more questions about this shit. Feel free to drop questions on the video as well. And we can, uh, in the comments, we can always answer questions there. Uh, then you'll be entered into the giveaway where you can win five Northern Light Seed next week, where the spin happens, and then you can go and do your own Gorilla Grow somewhere. Um, I'm doing gorilla. So comment, do it when the stream is over. Of course, you can't do it while it's live, but when it's done, make sure you drop a comment. And that that giveaway will end next week, which will be on the 16th, Saturday the 16th at 12 p.m. British summer time. And then it'll yeah, be make sure no you, end, you put that. your comment on the right video. <laughs> yeah yes. Mm-hmm. yes make sure you do that <laughs> this is episode 85 is it i think this one is 85 86 i'm not sure the one about gorilla growing you know saying the thumbnail yeah so there we go thanks for joining us everybody don't forget you can go download all the episodes on all the p- different podcast networks and shit do that we like that we like downloads we get shit loads man it's shocking the amount of downloads we get sometimes man like hitting nice to get downloads we like downloads yeah we, we like it we like numbers there you go yeah don't forget to leave a comment on the video so you can be entered into the giveaway to win five northern light autos so you can go out and do your own gorilla growing this year so that's what we want to see we want to see people doing that so yes thank you for joining us hope everybody's enjoyed the show that's about is there anything else to say anything else to add don't forget to like subscribe and all that share with friends mm-hmm. you know it's bring a friend week next week oh there's there's one Thanks for reminding me, Rashi. <laughs> March, I took the leaf out, you know, but there wasn't allowing us to have a leaf. Like, well, th- this this avatar, this emoji is not allowed. I d- don't know why. Well, on your emoji, ages ago it was. Mm-hmm. But I take, I took out the leaf from behind and I would just put you there with Marge underneath. And All it's right. allowed this time. So you got an actual emoji now. Ooh. Woo-hoo. Yeah. <laughs> you guys are all like things or people or monkeys a monkey i'm just like a symbol I yeah don't really, i'm just the like symbol, an abstract artist formerly known as prince and shit <laughs> <laughs> live in the fucking abstract in the void or something just some presence i'm just a presence you're just a 2d being yeah yes. that's what it is
<laughs> yes, man. Like, download, share. Good advice, that bubble hack. I like that. Just sweet. Make sure uh, <laughs> Nox is going crazy with the Marge avatar now. Yeah, I love it. Nice. I love it. Nice. Cool. So, hope you all enjoyed the show. Let's, oh, uh, I love it. <laughs> I didn't realize you fucking done the marriage properly, man. It's official. It's official. Ooh, That's the Marge emoji. Savage. That's right. Use I'll it as much as possible. Myself. If you would like to use the Marge emoji, then become a YouTube member for just four twenty a month, three fifty in real money for the Loch Ness right. Monster. That's right. Bubblehawk's also saying that I should win the What Happened to GB competition. Was I'm there a competition? Well, you you win an emoji. Much. There you go. Oh, come on. <laughs> hey, shit. Just send you some win. seeds. I'll send you some <laughs> seeds over that. Did you need seeds right. or something, Mike? Right. You need seeds to give a shout and send some stuff. All right, sounds good. Well, she's got <laughs> seeds coming, don't you? Nice, worry. nice. Right, <laughs> see you on Tuesday, maybe, uh, yeah. and or Thursday or Sunday again. Goodbye, yeah. everybody. Enjoy your weekend. <laughs> Goodbye. Yeah. Goodbye. Goodbye. Have a good one. Bye. Bye. Bye.